everyone. In this video, we're going to go through the common linked list operation that is inserting a node at the front of the list. So how we're going to do this is we're going to draw some pictures, we're going to trace through the algorithm, see what cases there are, and then we're going to head over to the VM and code up this operation. Now, until we code up our print list, it's going to be a little difficult to see if our insertion is implemented correctly. So we'll do that in the next video for sure. But before we print the list, we've got to be able to insert some nodes in the list so that we see something to print. All right, so let's start with inserting a node at the front of the list. So when we first create a linked list object, as I'll show you here in the code, we're going to invoke the default value constructor. The default value constructor for a linked list really doesn't do much. All it does is set head to null. So an empty list, the head doesn't have anything to point to, there's no nodes, so it points to null. That's our special case that we're going to look for before we do anything like trying to access, say, heads next, because if head is null and we try to access a member using the null address, it's going to crash our code. All right, so our goal is then to think about a special case like where the list is empty and then another case where the list is not empty to be able to start inserting nodes into the front of this list. It'll start out empty. All right, so inserting a node at the front of the list. There are two cases then we need to be aware of. The first one is when the list is empty. How do we know if the list is empty? Well, head will be equal to null. The second case is when the list is not empty. So option or case number one is going to be easier to code up, but it's gonna occur less frequently. Option number two is gonna occur a lot more frequently. We go to insert a node into the list and the list isn't empty, uh, but it's just a little bit trickier to code up, but it's a good warm up for some other common linked list operations like say inserting an order or removing a node. Those can be a little trickier. So I like starting with insert node at the front of the list. So let's start drawing out a list. Okay, right now, our list looks like this. We have a head pointer, there are no nodes in the list, so head points to null. Okay, let's say we wanna insert a new node in the list, and I'm gonna do it over on the far right of the screen in order to make room for doing a few insertions. And since we're always gonna insert at the front of the list, then our older nodes, which were inserted first, are going to be at the end of the list, right? They're always gonna get pushed out as new nodes get pushed into the beginning. All right, so let's say we wanna insert 12. So we're going to make a new node. We're gonna store 12 as its data value, and we're going to set its next pointer to null. So let me show you the code for what our node looks like. So here's our node right here. This implementation has it as a struct. You could also have it as a class. Just remember that the default access for a class is private, whereas it's public for a struct. So that's why I don't have to put the public access specifier in front of value and next. So node only has two members. It has uh, the integer value. So this is kind of the data payload for the node that it stores. And then it has a pointer to the next node in the list, which will be null until this node has something to point to. And note that I have struct node here and I also have struct node here. You might be wondering why there's struct in front of node. Well, that's because if you think about it, we are defining the node type at the same time we're using the node type. So the compiler needs to know that that's what we intend to do. So we just slap this struct on in front in order to let the compiler know, okay, this node type isn't finished being defined yet, but we want to use it in here and it's a struct and that helps the compiler figure out what we're doing. And what we're doing is actually called defining a self-referential data structure, right? So node is a struct that stores data and inside of node it refers to a node itself okay not the same node possibly the same node you wanted to do that uh, but it has an attribute of type node and it is 
of type node. Uh, kind of cool. That's called self-referential. Self-referential. All right, so here's kind of our linked list class. Here's our node. Here's our head pointer. Okay, so initially it, it points to null, but we're about to make a new node, and since the list is empty, head is going to point to this new node. All right, so we got to figure out which case we're at. Are we at case number one or case number two? Well, head is null, so the list is empty. So we're case one. Case one is pretty straightforward to implement. What we're going to do is we're going to overwrite the null that head is storing with the address of our new node. So let's say our new node is at memory address um, 1212. Okay, so we want head to store 1212 so that it points to the 12 node. So what's going to happen is head is going to point to our new node, which is simply going to be code like head is assigned new node, which means that it no longer points to null. And we're done. We just inserted a node at the front of the list. We had to check which case it was. And since it was case number one, this is all the code we need right here head is assigned new node. All right, let's insert another node. Let's make this node, let's do dark green. All right, let's say I wanna insert a new node and this node has data value of five. Okay, so it initially points to null for its next pointer. In order to insert this new node in the list, we have to figure out what case we have. Is the list empty? Is head equal to no? Null. No, it's not. Head is equal to 1212, right? That's the memory address of the first node in the list. So we have option number two. The list is not empty. So here's what we need to do. We need to update our new node to point to the current first node in the list, which is 12. Then we need to make head point to the node with five in it. Okay, we want to do it in that order because let's say, for example, and I'll do this in red because it's it's bad, not what we want to do. Let's say we do this in a different order. Let's say we say head points to this new node. Okay, that would mean we would lose this link right here. Now, how can we say that head's next pointer, this guy right here, oops, this guy right here should no longer point to null, it should point to node 12 with index or with memory address 1212. How do we do that? We can't because we just lost that memory address. It's not stored anywhere. This is kind of dangling out here and we don't have a pointer to it. So we definitely don't want to do this first. We want to do it second. Let's undo this. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, new node next is assigned head. Okay, so that's going to make this link right here. Okay, so new nodes next no longer points to null. It points to node 12, at memory address 1212. Okay, now, since we want new node to be at the front of the list, we don't need head to point to the old front of the list anymore. So we're going to specify that head now points to the node with five as its data value, thus breaking this link right here. So here's the code for this. Head is assigned new node. That's it. So let's do one more example. Let's insert another node and then we'll code it up. Let's make this node purple. So let's say I want to insert a new node. This node will store the value three. It's initially going to store null for its next pointer value. Okay, we don't have case number one. Obviously the list isn't empty. It's got two nodes in it. So case number two is down here. 
Okay, case number one is up here. So we need to say new node, next pointer gets head. Okay, mm -hmm. well head points to the five node. So I'm going to update this pointer to point to the five node. So next pointer no longer points to null. Then I'm gonna say head gets new node. So head is now going to point to new node, breaking this link here. And now you can see that we have three nodes in our list. And every time we've inserted a new node, it's gone at the front of the list. This is constant time complexity, right? We haven't had to traverse our list in order to insert a node. No matter if there's a thousand nodes after three, it doesn't matter. It's gonna take the same amount of work to insert three as if there was only one node, or in this case, two nodes. All right, here we are in linked list. We're gonna to need to add a prototype for our insert at front, which is going to accept an integer value, which is the new value to insert in the list. We're gonna head over to linklist.cpp and we are going to add this as a member function of the linklist class. So we need to make a new node first, and when we make this new node, it's going to be dynamically allocated. That's what's going to make our nodes scattered all over throughout the heap and make them persist beyond the life of this insert at front function. So new node's value is going to be new value, and new node's next is going to be no. Okay, so I'm just setting up the two struct member variable values of our node struct. So we've got value and our next pointer. All right, so now we've got our two cases. The first one, is the list empty? Well, let's find out. Is head equal to null? This first time we insert a node at the front, it will be. If so, this is our easy case. Head is simply going to be assigned new node, right? New node stores the memory address of this new node out in the heap. So head is going to store that new node, that memory address, so that we can use it in order to access our linked list. Else, I'll say here, list is not empty. If the list is not empty, then we're going to be following our code that we wrote here. Case number two, new node, next pointer is assigned head, Head is assigned new node. All right, let's compile this, and then we'll head over to main and test it out. Looks good. All right, so for main, we've got this empty list. We're going to call the member function we just wrote, insert at front. We'll insert 12, then we'll insert five, and then we'll insert three. All right, we can run this. It doesn't crash, that's good. But we don't know if it really was successful because we can't see our linked list. So in our next video, we're going to write a function, a member function of linked list that is going to print out our list. It's gonna walk through every node until it reaches the end of the list, and note that the end of the list is denoted by a next pointer being null. And that way we can see the contents of our list, and it should look like this. We insert 12, then five, then three. 12, then five, then three. All right, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next videos where we're gonna go through the remainder of the common linked list operations.